Hello, welcome to Stories in Time from home, my home. <laughs> my name's Eloise Shotler, I'm a storyteller. And for, oh, several months now, I've been putting this story, this program, uh, mostly about how you make it or get through being in a quarantine. The rules that are there, the advices that are there for stay home, stay home and protect yourself. I love that. I mean, that is exactly what I think that I'm supposed to be doing. And so far, so good. So I'm doing that. But you know, it can be hard. It can. It can get hard. It can get boring. It can get just difficult to stay in your house, even if you're trying to take care of yourself. So the other day, I hit one of those empty things, you know, where you sort of hit a hole in the asphalt. And I thought, how now what am I going to do about this? I keep myself very busy. I'm sure that you do too. And I think that's what helps. And I just didn't have anything going on. But I turned on the TV and I was looking around and I went to YouTube. And I found something I didn't realize they had. I knew that I had watched, you know, a lot of the movies and the videos um, on Perot. Hercule, Hercule Perot. I love it. I know his stories, but I can't say his name. Hercule Perot. And I hit not just one or two. I hit a list of at least 50, 60. And I thought, oh my gosh. And then I looked closer. And if you could keep following it, it was chronological. First book that Agatha Christie published was in 1920. It was the first one out. And then it was so popular that it grew and grew and grew. And she was doing at least one book a year. If she had the time and had the work. And people just loved it. And I knew that they loved it because I had grown up sort of surrounded by books by Agatha Christie. So there I thought, here is what I've been looking for. I'm going to catch up with all of us. And um, I remembered a lot. My grandmother was an Anglophile and the books in her home were basically, mostly Agatha Christie. And so July was another time for me to focus on. There were some birthdays in there. My grandmother, my father's mother, had a birthday in July. She always had her birthdays in July. What am I talking about? She always had her birthdays in July. And I thought, I'll just think about her. I'll think about what did she do? How, why did she like being an Anglophile? What about Agatha Christie? Did she really read? Well, I knew that she read a lot of her stuff. So there, there you had that. And then, although I knew I was the second grandchild, the first grandchild was a lovely little blonde uh, baby that was the first one. I came three months, four months later, and I had dark hair, straight hair, not curly hair, no Shirley Temple possibilities there. And I knew that because, uh, her mother was the oldest daughter. You know, there were so many things that make that pair so important. I knew I wasn't the favorite. Well, you know, you just have to live with that. You're not hated. You're all those things. A lot of affection is given to you, but you know that you're not a favorite. But every time I came to her house or spent the night with her or got called in, for going for uh, food, having a dinner, having lunch. She was always really glad to see me. And that made us have really nice bonds between us. Even if you're not a favorite, you can love and be loved. And that's what happened to me. 
Her magazines and her books, Agatha Christie primarily, were either on a table next to her bed, they could be sitting next to the couch, they were all, always ready, ready to be picked up. Wow. I picked up and I would thumb them because it took me a while to it really want to read them. But I'd come over and we would talk and she would tell me stories stories about the romance with her husband, my grandfather, Papa Sam, and we might sit in his office, his home office, and there was a big uh, typewriter on the desk, and Manny would let me start to learn to peck, 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 peck on that typewriter. I felt wonderful. I felt like I was really writing. I too, perhaps, could be Agatha Christie. Well, we know that's not true, but that's how it felt to clack, clack, clack along with that typewriter. And she also introduced me to the muffins, the breakfast muffins that were introduced into the United States from UK uh, in the 50s. And it's still my favorite, you know, when you could put it into the oven or in the, in the uh, toaster, melt the butter and pour it over, and it's just divine, wonderful. I learned a lot of things from her. She could do a lot of things, her reading, her laughing, she wrote poems, not the finest in all the world, we'll say that, but she had loaded it with her humor and it was really wonderful. I have copies of it. And the one thing that I didn't do with her, several things as a matter of fact, I should have set her aside before she died, but I was too, young really to think about that and I didn't ask her to teach me to play bridge as well as she could. She could master a bridge grade. And then I would have loved it to have her teach me some of the other things. And one thing that she did, I was a young bride, I was pregnant with my first child and shortly after she died my aunt sent me a yellow flannel blanket for the baby, yellow in case it was a boy or a girl it would fit. And she had uh, put um, tatting all around the edge. So she could do many different things. Oh, it was wonderful. It really was wonderful. And she introduced me to Agatha Christie. And that liking from me came over time. I didn't pay any attention to her sometimes because I was busy. I was raising children. I was doing housework. I went back to all those things. But then Jim and I went to London in 1974. He was going for medical meetings and, you know, doing his study work and all that stuff. And I was going because I was working on my master's at American University in painting. And I wanted to see every museum, every, everything in London. And I would try to do that in the mornings. And then the afternoons, Jim and I would explore London museums maybe again, monuments, all that thing. And one afternoon at lunch, we were sitting there and we heard people near us talking about and laughing about this play that they had seen the night before. The Mousetrap, a play written by Agatha Christie. I have never heard of that. Have you? I asked Jim. No, I never heard of that. What do you think? Well, the way that they're carrying on, I think we ought to get tickets. And we did. We were able to get tickets that night. 
to see the uh, mouse trap. It was wonderful. The actors were terrific. The costumes were fun. Everything was set up so beautiful. And the way that Agatha Christie had written the play, it just drew you in to figure out what had happened and who had done it. Who had done it? But you know something? There was a secret. There was a secret. They never let anyone know. And if you came in to see that play, you had to sign a little thing that said, you wouldn't tell. Isn't that great? I mean, it really is. And you could go back two weeks later or two days later, and that secret might have changed. So that it was a vital dynamic sort of thing and made you think, or at least it made me think that way, of Agatha Christie. Yes, it was wonderful. And how it helped me for the last weeks, two weeks, I've been doing nothing but wearing the warm cloak of Agatha Christie's imagination as I've watched those, those uh, plays, those programs uh, that I found on YouTube. And I'm sharing that with you, with anybody that's interested, that may get stuck at home for some period of time and get itchy and want to get out, not want to stay there, but does want to take care of themselves. Get on board. And if you don't like Agatha Christie and her cool and Hastings and, you know, Japs from Scotland Yard, if you don't have some kind of imagination for them, just enjoy the, the furniture and the clothing and the buildings that they're taking you in and out of. I loved it. I loved every bit of it. I hope you will. I hope you will. And that we'll all get through this thing with the best that we can do. The best that we can do. Thank you for coming. I'm going to name this story I just told you for whatever worth. The mouse trap. The mouse trap. And every time I think of that, I'll think of those places that I've been. It's a memory. It's uh, just a little album that I'll carry in my head of good things that I've really enjoyed days of my life sometimes. I hope you'll find something that'll help you do that too. Thank you.